versus how Absa usually plays. But at the same time, Niceness, they go about Absa in a much different way than Penguin, who likes to, uh, who likes to suffocate and strangle you out. If, if there was anything from that previous set we saw Niceness at, he looks for conversions and conversions all day. Yeah, and the fact that you're able to play the range game in a very fluid manner against Claren is very promising for Niceness, especially as they start off game one on Jules Vale, where, again, we're stuck in a situation where Claren loves to hang on to that base platform and just punish wayward movement. Unfortunately, against the likes of Absa, you are forced to stay very mobile, and the way that Niceness is playing right now, Uda is forced to stay in the air, hanging on for dear life. Just placing this cloud in the exact spot. I love the wait from Uda to recover, finding as much time as he needed to make sure he got to that platform. But then it didn't even matter. Very nice parry from Niceness and closes out stop one. Like, this is going to be a match that I think patience is the, the prevalent feature from both players on how they're going Always to win. Because you. we've seen that Niceness is able to have a little bit of reservation behind their buttons. And that goes a very long way when it comes to cloud placement and choosing your punish option as Absa. At the same time, Uda does manage to find their boots on the ground. All of a sudden, they have a field where you don't have to worry about the cloud. You don't have to guess as hard on where you're allowed to move. You get to dictate the pacing of that match. Yeah, the more that Clarence sets up that no fun zone, the more struggles Nicest is going to have. But that's where it keys into timing access coming out from Niceness. And the frequent use of that cloud is a big part of that. Letting the cloud linger occasionally while throwing out very frequently in rapid succession creates a, a lot of uncertainty in Uda, especially when Uda is in disadvantage. As we see an up tilt into that up air, close it out on a, uh, on a, sc uh, a scouted wave dash in. Look at the wave dash. I'm loving this very controlled movement from Uda right now. Just moving around with a lot of wave dashing so they can get those down tilts. And it's what's going to ultimately lead to a position where they can find those stocks. Like, staying reserved with your movement is what's going to guarantee you stage control. And that goes so far on a stage like Julesville, where Uda is already on the hunt for yet another stock. On the hunt for one, but all it takes is one overextension, and suddenly this damage is starting to rack up very, very like a lot by just in, in so quick. Oh, oh the my. DI was so good from Niceness! They were one poor decision away from going into tied stocks. That, that parry will certainly do Woo! it. Oh, the, the DI check. You're not going straight up. You're going to the left. Great awareness from Niceness to DI that properly as... I'm going to be Looking honest with you, but I didn't DI that right. No, not at all. But, yeah, I mean, he didn't DI Thunderline up right as <laughs> Niceness takes a step back in his chair, realizing the Jets had been turned on from Uda. And he's got to watch out in the remainder of this best of five set where you have got time to adjust. Oh, it's just such a dangerous situation to be in where, like, one little mistake can be the stock. Forget the damage. Both of these players showcasing that they can rack up the damage, no issue. But the way that they're finding conversions on the platforms of Julesville was so impressive. The fact that we're going to Spirit Tree, I think, is actually, again, a really good decision we saw from Uda earlier in the bracket. And I think another one that's going to go a long way, especially while we see that, that patience beneath the platform just waiting for their opportunity to punish accordingly. Yeah. You can spend all day playing around these platforms and Claren, it masks Claren's biggest weakness when you have wide platforms like this. Being able to wave land, wave land on and off, play through them, both with hitboxes and with plat drop aerials, and being able to reset your jumps all the same and help out your recovery since they peter off the stage. This stage seems like it covers all of the things that Nysus was exploiting on Jewel's Veil. Vale. Not so, but these parries, they still got it. Oh, oh in reverse too. Great DI to on the throw, but you're still very, gone. very, you're still very gone. gone. <laughs> sometimes just F strong at ledge works. And sometimes up till also continues to work. Wow. That was even with good DI. Like back air is just so well spaced from niceness. Finds that reversal all. Well and dandy, but they need to start racking up the damage as well. Cloud not putting in as much uh, utility as we've seen from previous games. That was an interesting uh, mix-up with the uh, up B onto the platform, then air dodge in, but that's the that's the way Uda's been playing. It's just so good against so many attempts to land on stage because he's not pressing a button until he knows it connects, or it, he knows that it will connect eventually. Like intentional whiffs and that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, All right, I cloud. think that nice is sort of felt that I was talking some shit about that cloud because now this cloud is putting in all the work at the ledge here. All right, a ton of damage, really good situation, but that forward tilt gonna get punished hard, and that's another stock down. Yeah, sometimes roll in down strong, it, it works across games. It works across different games. It still, it still keeps on working. But so does this mm -hmm. cloud. Cloud is. It's certainly earning its wage today. Oh, yeah. It's getting time and a half after a stock like that. Manages to force a wayward air dodge into the up air. It's tied stocks with not a lot of percent build up onto niceness. Very well played. And this is the situation that they were waiting for. And now, once that tempo starts to get a little higher, you're forcing Claren out of that comfort zone. When Uda has to play at that higher pace, all of a sudden, you're not seeing as many tippers landed. You're not seeing as many consistent hits. And you're not seeing that meaningful of stage positioning. Cloud pops over and over, finding the one he looks, uh, finding the one he needed, and the back air extension. It's gonna close out, stop the mine on one part of the stage, and as soon as it pops, another cloud takes its place. This is I yeah. <laughs> a sheep turned Hydra turned back into an electric sheep, as there were so many clouds covering exactly what was so strong about this stage for Uda in the beginning of the game turned into a detriment as soon as stock two happened. I feel like it was exactly when you called it out too. <laughs> Not enough clouds. Nice Nick's fixed that real good. Yeah. Game three is going to take us to Tropple. And the fact that there's, again, it's a stage layout that's going to benefit Claren really well. I'm concerned about how well Uda's going to be able to control where Niceness is positioning themselves because of that topmost platform. There's a lot of opportunity for Niceness to find reversals and safer returns to the stage because of it. And if they maintain that cloud positioning just as they found halfway through game two, it's almost guaranteed that we're going to see the 3 0 for Niceness. It's on Uda to change that. These platforms are the same height as the uh, as the platforms on Spirit Tree, or uh, com comparable to at the very least. So cloud placement coverage is all about the same for Niceness going into this game three in comparison to the previous stage, which not having to change your muscle memory that much it certainly leads you to finding open parries and open punishes as we saw in stock one. Stock, I mean, stock one already being off the board for Uda and being a, a down a stock against Absa, who is an, an Absa in niceness that looks like they're ready to convert off of any single hit, any straight hit. Not finding the spacing. Yeah, no, down strong just sending it. A, it's sending upwards, but not as much knockback as we need. No. Ooh. There we go. Hunting with the up air, though, going to be rewarded. That was a really huge pickup from Uda. He couldn't let oh. the percent find it. It's way higher any more. That's such unfortunate situations for Uda. From the whiffed parry on the left side to the whiffed counter on the right side. And Nicest turns all of that into big percentage. Uda really wants this. He really needs this game, and he needs a game in top 16 and just putting himself on the board. He's been so close in so many situations, but just a couple of unfortunate interactions falling his way. Oh, looking for the Nair. Good stun on it, too. It's going to keep the pressure up. The percentage is looking real good across the board. And that D high on the cloud was so important. It was good for dodging up tilt. It was good for dodging up strong. And all you take for your efforts is a little bit of damage, but another cloud to follow ultimately leads into a kill. The fact that Niceness is so ready to pull the trigger, like the bomb exploded, that cloud is already where Uda had to be to avoid it, and he gets the follow-up off of it too, as we are back at ledge. We are back at the fun game that Absa loves to play. How do you avoid cloud? <laughs> like the cloud has just been doing so much work for niceness as soon as they recognized that uda was playing confidently from center stage and able to box them out they've taken center stage for themselves and they forced Uda into a situation where if you're going to come back to fight for center stage you're doing so at a percentage where now you have to start worrying about if this next interaction is going to lead to you losing a stock if there's a contract and there's a contract bonus in it for cloud if they take enough stocks and <laughs> it's hunt for that one Great tech on Uda's part, keeping it alive Whoa. as long as he could, but when you least expect it, the Thunderline comes in and a well-deserved pop-up on Niceness as they punted their ticket into loser side top eight, and that looks like a hurdle that uh, Niceness was waiting to break through as he just got through. Yeah, that was just ex well-deserved pop-off, the Absolutely. way that they were playing, because Uda was slowly but surely figuring out the counterplay to the cloud positioning, from how they were adjusting returning to stage to how they were choosing to just get rid of the cloud before going on the offensive. And the fact that Niceness was consistently one-upping that counterplay just goes to show that they belong in tonight's top eight.
there. I mean, this is it's niceness. Shout outs to the Rochester Institute of Technology. They attending there and coming down with uh, multiple players. I know a uh, Bagel is friend is also a RIT. Yeah, uh, a, a few players were joking how yeah. today is just a Rochester local. Yeah, it which kind of is. It's a hell of an event to call a local. <laughs> Hey, worth it! Uh, worth it to see all these good players come down. I mean, upstate New York is a is a bit of a trek, but they made it out here. I, I think the, the many of schools are going on their winter session breaks, yep. so all the time to put a little bit more time into games like Rivals of Ether and show off those skills you obtained by kicking back in the college dorm room.